You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are watching, listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 8 11 21. Well, freedom, are we losing it? Is it really the biggest casualty of all of the health issues we've seen over the past year? Well, my next guest seems to think so. George Gammon is with us now. You find him at georgegammon.com. And if you got a question for him, just shoot an email to me, kl at kerrylutz.com. George, welcome back. Ah, thanks for having me, Kerry. It's great to be back. Hey, so, so we're talking and finances, what's happening in the global economy, all that's important. But you have one uh, overriding, overarching issue that you're concentrating on now, and that's freedom, right? It absolutely is. And it's also freedom, but then it's also encouraging people to think about what wealth is. And uh, as an example, uh, if we were all on a deserted island, or if you and I were, if we had uh, a billion dollars in cash and, a ch and a, some sort of chest or something, or gold or Bitcoin, uh, we would still be dirt poor because there are no goods and services. So for those in people who are listening to your show right now, I would encourage them to look at their own portfolio, go back to 2019, and compare it to what it is today. Uh, for a lot of those individuals, I'm sure their portfolio is uh, larger in size as far as the, the number uh, on the portfolio is probably bigger than it was in 2019. But then I'd encourage those same people to ask themselves, uh, do they have access to more goods and services today or fewer goods and services today? When's the last time you tried to get a reservation at a restaurant? You know, good, good luck with that. Uh, when's the last time you tried to get uh, an Uber? When's the last time you tried to get a, a rental car? Um, it, 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 it really takes me back to the stories of communist Russia. And I'm not saying that the United States is a communist country uh, yet. Um, but what I am saying is back in communist Russia, we remember, you know, when I was growing up in the 70s and the 80s, we remember seeing these uh, pictures uh, where people standing in line for hours and hours and hours just to get a loaf of bread or people not being able to turn on the heat in their apartment or something like that. And we just assume or I just assumed that that's because they were just uh, they didn't have any money. Uh, but when you actually read history, you see that they actually had money. That was not the problem. They had plenty of money. They just didn't have any stuff. They didn't have any bread to buy. They didn't have any gas to heat their furnace. It wasn't an issue of, of, of paper uh, or, in other words, dollars or rubles or whatever. It was just an, a lack of stuff. And so that from an economic standpoint, I think that's what's most important for people to recognize right now in the United States. And when you look at these policies, whether it's uh, government deficit spending, whether it's uh, more stimulus checks, whether it is uh, a rent or excuse me, an eviction moratorium or a mortgage forbearance or whatever it is, or for that matter, uh, uh, we'll call it a, um, a certain passport that you need to get into New York City to just uh, go to a restaurant or a gym or, or a theater or whatever. You have to ask yourself, does that policy create a society or an environment that will produce more goods and services or fewer goods and services? And if the answer is it will create fewer goods and services, then by definition, we are making ourselves poorer, regardless of what the size of your portfolio is. And also for, in my life personally, you know, I talk about economics, I talk about QE, I talk about the repo market, I talk about gold, silver, Bitcoin, stocks, uh, commodities, currencies, the dollar, I, I talk about all these things. And uh, I mean, the tagline for my YouTube channel, for heaven's sakes, is build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments. So, it, but it, so that's what I've tried to do in my own life. That's what I try to help people do. But 
uh, you can see the writing on the wall right now. And, uh, you know, as an example, we just before we were recording, I was talking about potentially going back to Florida because that's really one of the few places on planet Earth where I think that you can really have a, a, a similar degree of freedom that you had back in uh, 2019. So my point is what it makes you realize is that at the end of the day, however much gold you have or Bitcoin or stocks or commodities, however much uh, your net worth is, if you're locked up in a cage, if you can't go outside, if, you, if, you, if they take away your freedoms, your, your freedom to make choices for yourself and what you put in your body, you've got nothing. You've got absolutely nothing. And I think that's what we really need to remember today. That's such a great point. Uh, you know, there's certain things you need in life to have a happy, fulfilling life, to, li to live your or lead your best life. And that is... Uh, Number one, freedom. Number two, health. I always say if you don't have health, financial uh, prosperity, financial freedom, all that isn't going to make any difference to you because you're not going to be able to lead your best life. Yeah. Uh, freedom and health kind of go together. They're one and the same. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Yeah. So it's distressing when you see uh, when you see them just erode away and uh, passports for certain requirements that are not necessarily scientifically based. Co it's a form of coercion here, isn't it? Yeah. And I would also encourage people who um, are proponents of, let's say, increased restrictions, uh, maybe more lockdowns. Uh, you know, if you're a proponent of a uh, of heavy handed government, or let's say government being more involved in our daily lives um, you, for, the for the sake of a quote unquote safety, you, you've got to ask yourself, at what point will you believe the government has gone too far? You see, because they keep doing more and more and more and more. And at a certain point, no matter how what your political leaning is, no matter what your belief system is, no matter what, whether you think this is for the greater good because of safety, at a certain point, you have to do a cost benefit analysis. And there is a level, there is a point in time where the government can take away enough of our freedom and create enough restrictions for a long enough time to where the costs outweigh any benefit. So I, I think people really need to think of things that way. And then I would take it one step further. And I would say everything that's being done right now today by governments in the name of health, if they continue to take it further and further and further, which they have over the past year and a half, at what point is life not worth living? You see, we can be very, very safe for the rest of our lives, Carrie, if we just lock ourselves in a cage or in a bubble and never go outside, live like Howard Hughes, we'll be very, very safe. But is that life worth living? And that's what I would encourage all of your listeners to start thinking through. Yeah, well, you know, at some point, uh, hey, it's just like the uh, proverbial frogs in a uh, boiling water, you know, you just keep turning up the heat. Because if the frog, you throw it into hot water, it's going to jump out. But if the water starts out room temperature and gradually the temperature goes up before you know it, the frog's boiling and it's gone. Well, so we know we need to be aware of this. But in the meantime, we still got to survive financially, hopefully thrive. What are you, uh, where do you see any bright spots or what bright spots do you see on that front? Don't just survive. Thrive, the Financial Survival Network. Osino Resources is a Ross Beattie-backed gold exploration company in mining-friendly Namibia. Osino's district-scale land package is situated near two producing gold mines, one of which Osino's management team previously developed and sold to B2 Gold. Osino's founders and management are experienced mining professionals who have already successfully developed and sold two companies in the past seven years. Osino has a tight share structure, and with its current treasury, it can self-fund the advancement of its gold discovery into at least least 2022. This is an exploration company with drills turning that you'll definitely want to pay attention to. Osino trades in New York under the ticker O-S-I-I-F and in Toronto under the ticker O-S-I. To learn more, go to OsinoResources.com. That's OsinoResources.com. 
This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. You just gold, silver, and 30-year fixed rate debt on a positive <laughs> cash flowing property so you can take yeah. advantage of the inflation, which uh, we will be seeing. And, and I'm not saying that uh, you know the dollar is going to go down uh, by 50% uh, against the, the euro on the DXY. I'm not saying that we're going to have hyperinflation. Uh, we could see a scenario where the dollar goes up on the DXY to 110, 120, uh, maybe even higher. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the prices of groceries that you buy daily goes down. Those are two completely separate set of probabilities. It also doesn't mean that uh, the stock market goes up or down. You know, a lot of times those things can go in opposite directions. So I think what people need to, uh, from a financial standpoint, what they need to consider as far as the cross currents are what's going to happen with government spending, deficit spending right? Being monetized by the Fed. Because when the Fed is monetizing the government deficits, meaning that when Janet Yellen is selling treasuries, not to entities in the real economy, uh, so those dollars in that case would be coming out of the economy and then being redistributed. So on net balance, you're at a wash. But instead, where the Fed, is, through a shell game, is really buying those treasuries and they're going onto the balance sheet of the Fed and they're using bank reserves, newly created bank reserves to buy those, um, or at least the majority of them. When Janet Yellen spends those dollars, they, when she spend, or sends out those stimulus checks, as an example, and they're deposited uh, by the individuals who receive them or entities that receive them into their banks, then that creates additional dollars that are circulating in the real economy. You've got to think about the balance sheet of the individuals in the real economy and ask yourself, does that do the, the, the aggregate total have more dollars or fewer dollars? And so then you think to yourself, okay, what has happened in 2020 and 2021? Well, we know the amount of dollars on the balance sheet of the uh, private sector, the non-bank entities, has just gone parabolic. And that's why we've seen a lot of consumer price inflation. So then you, the question becomes, okay, well, is the government going to continue deficit spending? Because if not, then the pressures, the economic pressures are, are deflationary, especially with asset prices. So it's this, it's this tectonic, you know, these two tectonic plates that are always at battle. Well, to answer that question or to figure out the probabilities, I'd go back to quantitative easing. And I'd remind people that when we started QE, it wasn't QE1. It was just QE. Because there wasn't supposed to be a two, a three, a four, an infinity, according to Ben Bernanke. But what happened is once Ben Bernanke started quantitative easing, the financial economy, uh, the markets, and the, therefore the real economy became addicted to the QE to where it became a, a, like a monetary drug, as Schiff says all the time. He says it very, very well, I think. And so what happens when you start the drug is you have to take more and more and more of it to get the same effect. We saw that with QE right there. Look at the Fed's balance sheet, for heaven's sakes. And then I think today we're going to see the same thing with uh, government deficit spending to where it starts in 2020 with $5 trillion. But then in 2021, maybe 2022, it goes up to 6 it goes up to 7 it goes up to 10 it goes up to 15 it goes up to 20 And they have to continue uh, increasing the size of their deficit spending just to have the same effect on the economy, which, by the way, is just putting it in a state of, of, of comatose, because the more government spending you have, the more it distorts the economy. But at least in their minds, they're doing what's right, because you're not seeing a complete collapse of the entire system, which if we just left it up to the free market, that's what would happen because the debts are so high. So if we live in a world where, it, where that's most probable, then you, you're going to see the stuff that you buy daily increase in price. And therefore, that's what takes me back to gold. If you're someone that believes in, uh, in Bitcoin, it would take me back to Bitcoin. And it would take me back to whatever property you own 
Hopefully, it's a, maybe a rental property uh, that's cash flow positive. Uh, there, are, especially right now, you got to be careful because housing prices are all time highs, and that's in a massive bubble as well. But whatever uh, whatever real estate you own, you, you've got to try to own it with thirty or uh, a thirty year fixed rate mortgage because that really is the asset. Uh, the property, in my opinion, is the liability. All right. Well. That's so interesting and uh, not surprising. You know, uh, Will Rogers said 100, over 100 years ago, he said, invest in inflation. It's the only thing going up, right? <laughs> That's, I never heard that. That's a good one. Yeah. That's very hey, good. Yeah. Hey, he was a folksy uh, American iconoclast uh, of, uh, you know, the early 20th century uh he was a great, great with a lasso. He'd go on the stage with his lasso. And, yeah. you know, he, he was the one who also said that uh, every time uh, Congress uh, makes it, well, every time uh, Congress passes a law, it's a joke. And every time they make a joke, it becomes a law. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's another good one. Boy, he's got some very profound one liners. Hey, and I'll go back to Mark Twain. You know, I'm a quote collector. Uh, Mark Twain said uh, that uh, when the legislature's in session, no man's life, liberty, or property is safe. And uh, <laughs> now that we're heading towards a dictatorship, uh, it'll just be, you know, no man's life, liberty, or property is safe. So, <laughs> isn't that the truth? Yeah, the Congress does like nothing now, basically. They're a rubber stamp figurehead for. You know, when you talk about freedom going back, like all these executive orders, all right, like, uh, oh, hey, don't bother paying rent. We're going to give you a moratorium. Supreme Court strikes it down. And then and the, the CDC, and then it's somehow up to the CDC. Yeah. Explain like, that to me, Carrie. Explain how on earth the CDC to yeah. be in charge of uh, eviction moratoriums. How is that possible? Yeah, it's like, uh, how is that related to health? I mean, financial health, yeah, but uh, that's not their charge. It's your physical health. So, hey, what's next? Are we going to put uh, the uh, Environmental Protection Agency in charge of, uh, of uh, online dating services? Right. I mean, because there's a lot of toxic masculinity. So uh, so we have to put them in charge of it. Yeah, I think it's going. I mean, maybe not in that exact direction, but I, I think you touched on a very important point. I've been doing a lot of research lately uh, because I think that what the government is doing in our personal lives is absolutely unacceptable. And I think it puts us on the road to serfdom and it leads to totalitarianism and authoritarianism and i don't like it one bit so i've tried to because when you see all the inconsistencies that with the what the uh, who is saying or the cdc or, or you know the the uh, fauci or whatever there is just it, it you at the very least have to kind of scratch your head and say wait a minute here is is this really about health? Like, like even no, again, no matter where you are in the political spectrum, you've got to look at the inconsistencies and say, you know, this just doesn't pass the the sniff test here. So then the question becomes, OK, well, what could this be about? And I'm not saying it is about this, but what could it be? And then, you know, what that led me to is a psychological theory or experiment uh, it's been proven, so I don't know if it's actually theory, but it's called the foot in the door theory. And I don't know if you've heard of this, but basically it's it's used by pretty much every digital marketer uh, on the planet Earth. And it was also used by, I, I won't use the name of the group because it'll get this video banned, but it was used by a group of Germans in the 1930s prior uh, to World War II. <laughs> I think your, your listeners could uh, probably put two and two together there. But what it does is it, it says if you ask someone to do something small and they agree to it, there's a much higher probability that they also agree to something much bigger. Whereas if you would have gone to them initially with that big request, let's say, they would have most likely said no. So the the uh, experiment they used was they uh, took a group of people in California and they asked them to do one of two things. Uh, 
they said, hey, we'd like you to put this very small sign in your front yard. Or they asked them, hey, we'd like you to sign this, this, this petition. And it was something like, like drive safe or something like that. So, and then what they did uh, afterwards is they asked the people to put just a giant sign in their front yard, which really no one in their right mind would ever uh, agree to. And they found that the group of people that, uh, that refused or that they didn't ask initially uh, for either the small sign of the petition, less than 20% of those people agreed to the big sign. The people that agreed to sign the petition, uh, 55% of those people agreed to the big sign. And the people that agreed to the small sign, because it's something very similar, uh, they actually, it was 76% of the people agreed to the big sign. So the point is, once you get people to agree to these small asks and small requests, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's how you psychologically manipulate something or someone to do something that they otherwise would never, ever, ever, ever do. And so my point is, let's think about what's happened with uh, 2020 and 2021. First, it, they came out and said, well, we just need you to uh, wear a mask. OK, well, now we need you to, to lock yourself in your house. Well, now we need you to, to uh, close down your business. Well, now we need you to get this. Uh, we'll call it injection. Uh, OK, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, now on top of the treatment, we need you to wear masks again. And now we need you to wear five masks. And see, what happens is it keeps going and going and going, and it makes you kind of scratch your head and think to yourself, wait a minute, is this just the global elite using the foot in the door theory? Uh, to, and then the question becomes, well, what's the big ask? What's, what's the big request? And I think that's a question that people really need to be asking themselves right now. I think that's a great point. I think we'll leave it at that, George. So georgegammon.com, that's where you find them. And uh, a lot of sage advice here, George. And uh, hopefully maybe we'll come to our senses before it's too late because it certainly looks like we're heading in a bad direction. If you've got a question for George, send me an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. Sign up for our free newsletter on Financial Survival Network. George, it's always a pleasure having you on and we will talk to you again real soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Kerry. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.